When the virus first broke out, some people weren't afraid of becoming zombies. Instead, they believed it was God's way of offering humanity a chance for rebirth, advocating for the acceptance of death. This belief gave rise to a sect called the Truth Church. Two years on, the faith remained unshakable for some. In the church, a priest in a white coat named Jacob claimed to be the incarnation of Jesus, sent by God to persuade more people to embrace death for rebirth. Despite the absurdity of this theory, it found fervent believers. Today, three more joined. Jacob personally adorned them with crosses, congratulating them on becoming followers of Jesus, destined to save the lost. Meanwhile, T-Max, having weathered a storm in a week on the road, now starved, abandoned their fire truck. Murphy, undergoing alarming changes with dark hair sprouting on his face, increasingly resembled a zombie. This guy is taking a leak right now. The others debated behind his back whether to eliminate him and how to do it. Truth be told, Murphy wasn't exactly likable, but bound by a mission to save humanity, he was tolerated. Yet, this was a mere subplot. The journey had to continue. Ravenous, they pressed on. Garnett aimed to lead them to a community formed by his National Guard comrades, hoping for refuge. After an hour's travel, they arrived. The area appeared neat and tidy, likely a safe haven, but as they approached, armed men confronted them, ordering them to turn back. Garnett stepped out, seeking Major Williams, an old war comrade. A few moments later a man wearing a military hat came out. He was surprised to see Garnett, he didn't think he was still alive. Although they had been comrades in arms, it was the end of the world, so he had to ask what Garrett was doing here. Garnett spoke of his government mission, having traveled a year from New York, now desperate for food. Williams was shocked that he had traveled such a long distance from New York. After a brief inquiry Williams realizes that Garnett means them no harm and is prepared to treat them well except that the weapons must be handed over to the guards. The group had to do what they were told in order to get a full meal. 10K's weapons are mind-boggling. How does one man have so many weapons? After going through the process, they all entered the neighborhood without incident. At this point, the woman said to Williams, Three of Jacob's flock are back. Williams sighed and said, Check them out and let them in if they're okay. After all, they used to be part of this community. Little did they know, this decision would spell catastrophic disaster for the community. The X team also took a curious look. 10K was immediately drawn to a girl, feeling an urge to know her. Williams led them on a tour of the base, boasting of its high, secure fences, never breached. He explained that problems usually arose from within, hence the no weapons policy. In the dining hall, life seemed good with an array of food. That's when they spotted the three youths again. Roberta inquired about their background. Williams reluctantly said we'd taken in a missionary. He was preaching some weird theory about the end times being a gift from God and that we should accept zombies instead of killing them. He had been expelled, but some were swayed by his words. But slowly, every once in a while, someone would come back. After all, their families were here. When they're hungry, who's going to believe those words? Before Williams could finish, Cassandra started grabbing food, driven by their intense hunger. At the table, Williams tried to persuade Garnett to stay and help manage the community instead of going to California, warning of millions of zombies out west. But Garnett refused, believing that some things in life must be done. Williams didn't say anything about it, after all, we all have our own aspirations, and he knew his old friend was a stubborn man. Meanwhile, 10K couldn't take his eyes off Mary and discreetly followed her when she left, unnoticed by the others. After eating, Roberta and Garnett excused themselves, their intentions clear to the group. They retired to a room Williams had arranged. Just a bed, but enough for them. They're officially together and they're here for a little indulgence. Roberta had put a chair against the door to prevent interruptions. Patrick was talking to his former companion. What they didn't notice was that the other two returning missionaries had disappeared. One of them sneaked into the guard room. Luke, unobserved, revealed a cross hanging around his neck. Meanwhile, Mary reached the door, her steps unsteady. 10K, following her, noticed something on the ground, a cross. Puzzled, he looked up just as Mary staggered to the door, causing the guard to open it with concern. 10K fiddled with the cross in his hand, revealing a hidden dagger stained with blood. That's right Mary used the hidden dagger to kill herself just to turn into zombies and make this place fall. The man who was looking for something in the janitor's room also heard the noise and rushed outside. He didn't notice that Luke's throat had been slit. He tried to help Mary but was attacked by two zombies. Meanwhile in the canteen Patrick, who thought the time was right, also took out his crucifix and stood directly on the table. Patrick loudly proclaims the theory of rebirth and urges people not to fear death, as turning into a zombie is the beginning of life. He ended his speech by slashing his own neck. Mac and the others reacted at once and quickly looked around to see if there were any weapons at hand. 
because Patrick was going to become zombies. The others, still unaware of the severity, faced an inevitable grim end. Patrick transformed rapidly, attacking those nearby, throwing the dining hall into chaos. Those bitten turned into zombies at an alarming rate, attacking others. Doc and Cassandra wielded spoons in self-defense. Murphy wasn't so lucky, being targeted by a zombie. But surprisingly, the zombie calmed down upon approaching him. Realizing the situation, Murphy quickly pushed the zombie away and ran for the stairs. Doc opened a door, calling for Addie and Mac to escape. They had just subdued a zombie using cutlery. Addie misses her wolfsbane at the moment. If she had a weapon, she wouldn't have to go through all this trouble. After everyone came in, Doc closed the door to keep the zombies out. But he was still a step too late. The zombies chased Mac and Addie all the way to the kitchen, and they almost got bitten by the zombies several times. Together, they managed to subdue and control the zombie. Mac held the zombie's head down, and Addie grabbed a blender from the cabinet, using it to end the zombie in a gruesomely effective way. Catching their breath, they pondered their next move. Meanwhile, at the main entrance, 10K was fleeing from pursuing zombies. The inhabitants of the neighborhood, who have not yet reacted, are accustomed to a life of ease and comfort, and are now powerless to resist. On the other hand, Roberta and Garnett were having a good time in the bedroom, when suddenly there was a commotion outside, and Garnett yelled at them, but the noise outside got louder, they realized that something was wrong, according to their experience of post-apocalyptic survival, it was probably zombies, but it doesn't make sense at all, although they were puzzled, they quickly put on their clothes and trousers, despite their confusion, they dressed and prepared to investigate, with Roberta grabbing a table lamp as a weapon. Garnett cautiously moved the chair blocking the door. Suddenly, a zombie burst in, overpowering Garnett momentarily. The lamp in Roberta's hand doesn't kill, but attracts the zombie's attention. Garnett jumped up and pressed the zombie's head against the wall once, twice, three times, and the zombie's skull was crushed apart. Then they went out into the corridor to check. There were no weapons available, so they had to use books to defend themselves. Approaching the stairs, a zombie charged at them, but their coordinated effort quickly subdued it. Garnett lamented the difficulty of fighting even one zombie, realizing the dire situation if the entire community turned. Then, Williams appeared, devastated, blaming Jacob's twisted plot for the chaos. Garnett reassures his old friend that he should not lose heart and that the most important thing now is to get out of here. At this time Mac and the others arrived here to meet up. They looked at each other and now Murphy and 10K were nowhere to be seen. They didn't know if they were dead or alive. Williams, pondering, suggested an escape route through the safety passage, leading to a door at the end of the hallway, and out to the woods towards their vehicle. He urged them to leave quickly. Williams, now devastated, decided to stay here and save as many people as he could. Derek yells at everyone to get out. The sooner they leave the safer they will be. Murphy, on his own, escaped and stumbled into the bathroom where he wanted to hide for a while. Madeline also froze in front of this man in front of her if you do not speak really like a zombies. A zombie rushed in and pounced on Madeline. Madeline, being agile, dodges the attack and uses a piece of wood she had in her hand to smash the zombie to death. Breathing heavily, Madeline looks at Murphy and questions why he didn't help. Madeline was powerless to fight, only leaving a miserable sound echoing in the bathroom, powerless to defend herself. Madeline can only let out a scream as the bathroom echoes with despair. The virus inside Murphy was gradually transforming his body, making the zombies perceive him as one of their own, perhaps even of a higher rank. Meanwhile, the instigator, Jacob, had already reached the entrance. His followers, armed with guns and weapons, were ready to take over the place and punish those who had blasphemed against the gods. Garnett and others, following William's instructions, were fleeing through the corridor to its end, but the door at the end was locked a dead end. At this worst possible moment, several other survivors followed them. Mac shouted loudly, urging them to turn back and not crowd into the space. But these people had lost their reason and surged forward en masse. In reality, the door was blocked from the inside by Mary with a chair, making it impossible to open from the outside. Cassandra yelled desperately for everyone to retreat. The zombies were charging at them, and everyone there could only await their fate. Slowly, those on the outside were devoured by the zombies. Mac tried to unite everyone to push the zombies out, but the panic-stricken crowd kept pressing inward, creating a deadly cycle. Garnett and the others, powerless to help, could only watch as the zombies devoured everyone, knowing they would be next, using all their strength to push the door. It suddenly opened with a flash of white light. It turns out that 10K was passing by and heard the voices of their old friends and saved them by coincidence. Regrettably, those inside had all turned into zombies. Garnett decided to first get weapons and then look for Murphy. 
as Murphy's safety was crucial, but just around the corner, they were confronted by Jacob's followers with guns. 10K and Cassandra, in a favorable position, quickly darted towards the back of the house to escape. 